Welcome, this is a Rosie Shack production and we're going over how to make sure your projects work. We're going to go over doing a feasibility study so you can communicate with the people that are funding that your project is needed and affordable. So let's go into the different components so you guys can write up a proper feasibility study. Okay, an introduction to a feasibility study. Let's go in to what is a feasibility study. A feasibility study is an analytical tool used to determine the practicality and potential success of a project. It evaluates economic, technical, legal, and operational aspects to guide in decision making. A feasibility study is when you take a deep look in to whether or not your project is structured correctly to be a success. You look at a number of diff some different aspects and come back with which projects should be funded and which projects shouldn't. The purpose of feasibility studies. The primary purpose of a feasibility study is to assess the likelihood of success for a proposed project by identifying potential challenges and opportunities. It helps stakeholders make informed decisions regarding investments, resource allocation, and resource allocation. It's important to make sure that your projects are possible and needed. The significance of feasibility studies. Feasibility studies are critical for minimizing risk and optimizing resources and project development. They empower organizations to pivot or abandon projects that may not meet desired objectives, ultimately saving time and money. Okay. Let's talk about the types of feasibility, the types of things you look at to decide if you're funding a project. We've got four down here, technical, economic, legal, and operational, and we're going to go over each one. Then we're going to go over the components that go into your study that is your write-up for your bosses. Technical feasibility. Technical feasibility assesses whether the necessary technology and resources are available to meet project requirements. It includes evaluating technical capabilities, equipment needs, and potential technological risks associated with the projects. Economic feasibility examines financial implications and cost-benefit ratios for the project. They sometimes call it the ROI or return on investment for the project. It involves analyzing project revenues against costs to determine if the project is financially viable and offers a good return on investment. See, there's our ROI. Legal feasibility. Legal feasibility evaluates the regulatory and legal requirements necessary for the project implementation. This involves examining laws, permits, and compliance issues that could potentially impact the project's execution. Operational feasibility determines the organization has the capacity and resources to support the project's operation. This includes assessing human resources, organizational structures, and the potential for adapting to existing operations. Okay, the components of a feasibility study. There are actually five. The executive summary, the project description, the market analysis, the financial analysis, and the risk assessment. Some of these can be done by an MBA, and in their MBA specialty, they can write some of this up. Okay, let's look at the executive summary. The executive summary provides a high level of overview of the feasibility. Uh, High-level overview of the feasibility study. Summarizing the findings and the overall feasibility of the project. It serves as a concise report for stakeholders, highlighting critical recommendations and ensuring alignment with project objectives and expectations. The thing is, the executive summary can show how your project is aligning with the strategic plan or business plan of the organization that you've put together, and even a nonprofit can check if it aligns with values and goals in the future. 
The project description. This section describes the project in detail, including its objective, scope, and methodology. It outlines what the project intends to achieve, along with any specific deliverables or milestones, providing clarity to stakeholders about the project's vision. Market analysis. The market analysis examines the target audience, competitor landscape, and market trends. This evaluation helps in understanding market demand and the positions and positions the project strategically, allowing for informed decision making about project feasibility and scalability. The market analysis can prove that the project is viable and should have funding and will have a good ROI. The financial analysis. The financial analysis assesses costs and potential revenues and profitability of the project. It includes projections of expenses and returns, helping stakeholders to gain financial feasibility and establish funding requirements, ensuring the project's financial viability. The risk assessment. The risk assessment identifies potential obstacles and uncertainties that may affect the project. It evaluates risks such as market fluctuations, operational challenges, and financial constraints, enabling proactive strategies to mitigate these risks and increase the project success rate. It's good to look at the risks, especially if you're going into medical technologies or things that affect um, things that could have risk like traffic. So this is a very important component. Okay, let's look at some of the components. It says methodology for conducting a feasibility study. These are four very important components and I've talked about a couple of them in the past um, that you can use in your feasibility study to prove that it is feasible. So let's look at data collection. Data collection involves gathering relative quantitative and qualitative information needed for the study. Proper data sources include market reports, academic journals, and historical project data to ensure accuracy and reliability in the analysis. You can do a data collection of a market response to something. I did a data collection of an artifact for a project where we proved online education was viable and had raised scores over lay people's knowledge. Um, data collection is very important. In the social sciences, we call this aspect measurable outcomes. It's when you can actually measure your data and put it forward. Stakeholder interviews is an important component. Stakeholder interviews are critical for understanding diverse perspectives and gaining insights. Engaging with stakeholders ensures alignment with project objectives and uncovers potential challenges and opportunities. A SWOT analysis is something, something from the MBA Bible. It's when you look at strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats to position correctly. A SWOT analysis identifies strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats related to the project. This strategic tool aids in assessing the project's viability and aligning with, it or, aligning with its organizational goals. The validation of findings. The validation of findings involves cross-checking data and conclusions with external sources or experts. This process ensures credibility and helps mitigate risk before making strategic decisions based on the feasibility study. Research, 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 you can go for another expert to say you're right. The conclusion and recommendations. The summary of findings. Feasibility studies indicate a viable project with strong market demand sound financial projections and manageable and the manageability of risks. Key findings highlight potential revenue streams and a favorable cost structure, underscoring the project's long-term sustainability. So you put it all together and say, we can afford this, it's legal and we can do it and we have the resources, so let's move forward. You put that in your summary saying that the project is feasible. Actionable recommendations. Focus on strengthening market entry strategies and stakeholder engagement. Prioritize resource allocation for development phases while minimizing risk exposure through comprehensive risk management. The next steps, implement a phase approach to the project launch, beginning in securing funding 
followed by prototyping. Continuous monitoring and evaluation should be used to establish to adapt changing market conditions. This is part of our whole series where we're teaching you the process of making uh, a whole project and taking it to the finish. This is in the first phase of that project development. So this whole series, if you watch it, you're gonna learn how to make databases that work. Let's go ahead. So thank you for watching. Please hit like and subscribe. My name is Cynthia Mock for Rosie Shack. This project was made with the help of AI from Prezi at www.prezi.com. And to support our show, you can leave a tip below. You can also leave a comment to vote for what you want as a breakout study. Thank you very much and have a great day.